Hello again from Digicore Things. Continuing on with my minimalist Europe Card Bus project. Today I'll introduce a 1 megabyte ROM expansion card. First some background. Some time ago I decided I wanted a cartridge style ROM card to plug into my MECB backplane. This thought originally came about while considering that I might eventually mimic the Creative Vision TV console of the early 1980s. The Creative Vision was a 6502 based system which also used the TMS VDP video chip and a Motorola PIA. So once I have a 6502 CPU card to team up with my existing TMS 9929A video card and Motorola IO card, I'll be ready to explore this possibility. Some form of game controller or keyboard will also need to be devised. Originally, I was thinking of just using a backplane card slot as a custom cartridge slot for installing pre-programmed ROM game cartridges, similar to the original game console cartridge experience. But after expanding on this idea, and after checking what appropriate dual inline package ROM chips were available at a reasonable price, I arrived at the thought of instead making a bank selectable 1 megabyte ROM expansion card. In this way, one card could be used to hold maybe 16 games, each selectable via a bank select switch, for a TV console recreation. In addition, the ROM expansion could be used with any CPU card to allow easily switching ROM images each mapped within a 8-bit CPU 64K address space. It also further occurred to me that the original 64-pin ECB bus actually had 24 pins allocated for the address bus on the original 64-pin ECB A and C rows. We only need 20 address pins A0 to A19 to allow a full 1 megabyte to be addressed with the existing MEC bus. As a result, I've designed a flexible 1 megabyte ROM expansion card that will combine a manually switchable ROM bank for CPU cards that only support the A0 to A15 64K memory space with the ability to instead configure support for utilising the additional A16 to A19 address bus pins, effectively allowing the full 1 megabyte to be addressed from the MECB bus. This flexibility will be useful for potential future CPU card designs that can address a full 1 megabyte A0 to A19 address space. For typical 64K addressing 8-bit processors, this would be implemented via some form of memory management unit MMU, located on the CPU card to provide the additional four address lines beyond the normal A0 to A15 64K address space. Alternatively, more advanced 8-bit data bus CPUs like the Motorola 68008 in its DIP48 package natively provide a 20-bit address bus capable of addressing a full 1 megabyte of linear address space. To provide this flexibility, PLD will be used to configure between manual 64K block selection or the use of the full 20-bit address bus. Also, as with other MECB cards, the PLD will also allow flexible configuration of the card's address space use. This could either be the address space allocated within a 64K bank or the overall address space allocation within a full 20-bit 1 megabyte address space. In effect, the bus A16 to A19 address lines could be selected to address the 1 megabyte ROM space, or the manual 64K bank switch control is used to select one of 16 possible 64 kilobyte blocks, which is mapped into the card's PLD configured ROM address space use. Finally, to satisfy low cost and retro friendly dual inline package ROM chips, I've chosen the SST39SF040 
32 pin 512 kilobyte flash EEPROM chips. In this way you can also choose to only populate one ROM chip if you only require 512 kilobyte or eight possible ROM banks. So with that background and detail overview let's now take a look at the schematic. As can be seen we have our two 512 kilobyte flash ROM chips allowing for one megabyte of storage. We also have our usual PLD chip. However, for this card, the lower five address lines, normally used for allocating IO address space usage, have been repurposed with the high four address lines A16 to A19, and the addition of A10 to allow a more granular 1K boundary within the 64K address space. So we effectively have the full A10 to A19 address lines available to the PLD for the card's address space allocation. Finally, we have a 74 HCT257 quad 2 input multiplexer to allow the PLD to also select whether the A16 to A19 address lines originate from the bus or from our 4-way manual bank select switch. And that's pretty much it. We also have a jumper to control connection of the write signal to the ROMs, or whether to just treat them as read-only. So let's now have a look at the PCB layout. The PCB layout is pretty straightforward, again with the starting point being the MECB KiCad template that I created earlier. Note that I've positioned the bank select switch at the top edge of the board for easy access. The salt screen identifies ROM0 and ROM1 to easily differentiate the two 512 kilobyte ROM chips. The bank select switch footprint is a normal 4-way dual switch in a DIP8 package. You can, of course, just use a 4-way dual line switch. But the DIP8 footprint also accommodates a rotary coded switch, which allows a very easy 1 of 16 bank selection without needing to toggle four binary switches. I've used rotary coded switches for other projects and quite like them. However, a warning regarding where you source these from. I found a good price for some 16-way switches on AliExpress because of the shipping cost and that I use them in other projects. I ordered a large quantity from the AliExpress supplier. What a mistake. They appeared okay on receipt However, when I went to use them, the legs just break off when trying to insert them in the PCB. Here's an example. The pins seem to be made of an incredibly low quality metal that just breaks on the first sign of even slight bending. This also raises the question of whether the rated 20,000 switch operations is actually believable. This was unfortunately a quite costly mistake, and since I didn't discover this quality issue until over 14 days after receipt, I had no recourse via AliExpress, and I couldn't even post a review to warn others. So please be warned. I only recommend using genuine NIDEC Copal Electronics rotary coded switches. For this project, specifically the SC-1130, these are much more expensive, but I have used them for years, and they are genuinely good quality. Of course, you could just use a simple 4-way dual line switch. So, with that covered, let's take a look at the finished circuit board. The component side. And the solder side. So, I'll start with the IC sockets, 2 times 32 pin, a 20 pin and a 16 pin.
Next we'll get the 3 pin header and the bypass capacitors installed. Let's get them soldered in. Next we'll do the single inline resistor pack. Let's get that soldered. Right, next the right angle male DIN 41612 bus connector which is held in place with two 10mm M2.5 bolts. Right, let's get him soldered in. Finally, I'll solder in my NIDAC cable SC1130 rotary coded switch, making sure to orientate it correctly so the single leg should be towards the edge of the board. That's all done. And we're done. Remember, you could use a cheap four way dual line switch instead. With the PCB assembled, I'll next insert the 74HCT257 quad 2 input multiplexer. I'll also insert a jumper, a ROM jumper, in the read only position. This just leaves the PLD and the ROMs, which we need to configure, depending on how we intend to use the ROM expansion card. But at this point, I'll leave this for part two. I think this intro, design, presentation and first card assembly is probably enough for this video. So, until then. That's it. Thanks for watching.